a pertinent question when one considers how, considers how the COVID-19 pandemic has affected the business landscape. Political change, technological advancement, increased competition, and newly created ecosystems present not only a challenge, but an opportunity for local entrepreneurs to be flexible enough to pivot their strategies to allow them to seek new customers and gain market share. So, how do entrepreneurs prime themselves to go global? Joining me to discuss this is Jeffrey williams Edam, Group Business Head, Merchant Acquiring at Interswitch. Good morning to you, uh, Jeffrey. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, so, I want to start uh, by asking you, what role should, uh, sorry, products and quality standards, what role should they play in taking entrepreneurs to the next level of uh, the global playing field? Well, that's a good question, Rotus. Uh, I think the best way to look at this is to pick an example. So, if you wanted to... Um, export or do international trade for, say, okra, for instance. Um, the way we consume okra here would be very different from the way other people outside Nigeria consume okra. And so you know, some people actually chop it and cook it with stew and eat with rice while we make it into soups here. And so all of this is what you need to consider when developing the product to export. Um, you need to consider the packaging, you need to consider the ingredients, you need to consider how you describe it. Some people look at it in kg, others look at it as um, ounce, others look at it as pound. So you need to ensure that the way you develop the business and the product or your services, uh, you're looking at the global context, the, the culture that would consume this product outside the country in which you're producing this um, as well. One of the key things I also tell people to look at is time to market. The time it takes you to move things from here to the market, wherever you like to sell outside the country. Now, you also need to consider that there's also time to consumer. So if I send this, say, to Europe, uh, the time it takes to get to Europe, and the time this reseller there would keep it to the point where they would like to sell it to the end consumer, all of these are things you need to consider as you build the right kind of product for that kind of market. All right, thank you so much for that, Jeff. Okay, so how would an entrepreneur equip um, staff so that they can carry them along to face the challenges that uh, come with expanding globally? Well, uh, most entrepreneurs would not like to hear this, but you need to invest in training. Uh, the way we do business again in Nigeria is very different from the way Ghana, South Africa, Kenya, Europe, America, or even the UK do business. And so the knowledge gap would definitely impact on your business. So if you were thinking, I need to standardize to go internationally, the staff, everyone within that team needs to think global. Do they have the right kind of work environment that makes them think global? Do they have the right kind of tools at work that make them do global type transactions? Um, do they understand the business environment over there? Would you consider sending them abroad for them to visit, understand this market, go and acquire this right kind of knowledge that allows them to manage international business? It would cost some form of money, but if you're thinking global, that is a worthy investment you need to look at. All right, great stuff. Okay, what about um, understanding the, uh, the market and adopting the relevant business model? Hmm. So that's the tricky part. There's a lot of models that you can consider. So one, you, are, you know about the international market you're going into. The other, I do not know or have any knowledge about the international market I'm going into. And so let's take the first part. You've never done international trade or you've never exported or sold anything international before. And so to do that, here are my recommendations. So one, you would need to look at finding the right kind of partner. Uh, so that you don't invest too much into infrastructure and structure while you're there, just in case you need to pull out. Uh, you also need to look at someone local, somebody who understands the culture, somebody who understands the right kind of message, who can interpret um, the contracts and the business uh, conditions in such a way that you can understand, so you don't make wrong mistakes legally uh, as regards standards and as regards establishing your business in that um, environment. And so my first recommendation is look for a partner. Look for somebody who is local there that you can work with if you don't want a partner. Also, you also need to look at finding suppliers close to the market so that if you need to do things outside the country, you don't need to bring things in because it will be more expensive. So some of these items can be moved to that market, then recoupled to a point where it will be cheaper and price friendly for the market that you're targeting. All right, thank you, Jeff. What about the flow of transactions? The flow of transactions change? 
It will change. I mean, if I give you 5,000 Naira, uh, that would be definitely different from if I give you $5. Um, so it will change. But here are some things that you need to consider when looking at that. So one, I would recommend that you be very acquainted with the global fees for doing transactions. I mean, cross-border transactions have a whole different ballgame entirely. There are rules to consider, there are taxes to consider, there are fees to consider when you're doing business there. And also, you also need to look at the laws that govern trade uh, for the country that you're trying to go into. And so, understanding how you will receive your money, what currency you will receive your money in, how you will be settled, how you would pay the vendors that you're going to, uh, or your suppliers are going to deal with, what currency will that be in? Uh, remember, if you make the wrong choices, when that money goes from that currency to your local currency, you may have some FX losses. So if you can standardize the price matrix that you use so that regardless of what country, the pricing does not change a lot. Maybe you use a US uh, currency, the dollars, to, to trade. In that way, you have a universal, agreeable currency for all your trade. And if this is going to be funds transfer, online payment, cash transaction, whatever m medium you choose to collect payment, uh, you need to be sure that the currency and the value to you as a business is well thought out because this also impacts on pricing as well. All right, great. And I'm glad you've, uh, you've mentioned uh, pricing. So where, where does that you know, uh, come into play as far as how you, you know, set it for where going global? Well, I think you start from cost perspective. So what will it cost me to do business, say, in Europe? What would it cost me to do business in Kenya? What would it cost uh, me to retail this item? Now, I've seen people say, you buy corn here at 100 Naira, and that same corn, you would see it at the supermarket in the UK, it's about 1,000 Naira. Now, that difference, people do mock it, but the cost of transporting, the cost of retail, the cost of advertising, the cost of packaging, the cost of branding, the cost of running the business there, the staffing, everything may have justified why it's a thousand error now. And so you would need to start from that perspective. So understand the law, understand the transaction, understand your business model, understand how long you want to play in that market, understand the other part of the markets that you like to play in as well, understand what your product to be used for. Would it be immediate consumption? Would it be used to process the end product? All of these things will influence how you price. If you price wrongly, you would be out of pocket very fast. Um, you also need to factor in the change in the devaluation of Naira. You also need to look at inflation. You also need to look at the uh, fluctuating effect of the dollar as well, which may be your universal currency for transaction. All of this would impact what you can, you can sell. Uh, and using the example of our okra, for instance, if I buy a bundle of okra here for 100 naira and I need to export, I need to register a business, I need to give profit to my partner, I need to uh, pay for the retail space that this will be displayed. All of that factors into how you price your product. So recommendation, start from understanding the business and the market, and then also understand the costs associated to doing your business. Great stuff. So, Jeff, great, great tips. Um, how, how, you know, just to take a, a macro view of this, how does an entrepreneur know when it's time to move to, to the global stage? You see, many years ago, there was no globalization. Now there is. I mean, uh, who says I'm in the same studio with you? I could be in the, in the U.S. talking to you right now. That's how small the world is right now. Uh, you could talk to somebody on Zoom today and close a business deal across hundreds of hours apart. Now. Because the world is now a global village, doing business is easier and seamless. Mm. Now, big business and markets have become saturated because everybody starts to copy what is successful. And so intelligent entrepreneurs are looking for blue ocean. They're looking for new market. They're looking for new use cases. They're looking for what other substitute or primary or secondary market I can go into to be able to sell my product. Right. I mean, if I use this item here as um, an item to produce an end product, that item is a raw material in the context of the market that we're in today. If I take that somewhere else, that may not be a raw material. That may be the immediate consumption, the immediate uh, point, co consumable point, product. Point, point well made, Jeff. I appreciate it. Appreciate the run out of time. Jeffrey Williams, Adam, uh, Group Head, Merchant Acquiring, Interswitch. Thank you so much for those tips on going global for SMEs.